underneath center and go play action. He hands to Gibbs. It does indeed stay out there for Dan Campbell. Yeah, and I, I just don't like the call. I th center and at least give the threat of play action. I thought they would take a shot and actually lose yardage. It's fourth down and two. Not before he got four. In motion, they they know that they've got man coverage and they're able to. They make it to Montgomery. It's reported again. They love to get shoving after the whistle again. The Lamb fumbled it through the end zone, and then the Lions came right back. See those two going at it. They have been all night. Second and three. Full head of steam for Gibbs. Gibbs, uh, the rookie that. You know, he's running tough, and we mentioned this ball right when there's about to be contact made. You know, he gets both both hands on the ball. So. Seven to go, third quarter. Pressure by Clark. Met at Jameer Gibbs. <laughs> well, you're going to see Micah Parsons. He works through two guys. He gets... Here's a pass caught by Reynolds, and he's got a first down for Detroit. Now, he's got to buy some time here as he shuffles to his left to get away from the run. Time to throw the football. Montgomery Rams that he can get on streaks. He can get on great streaks Where he's hard to not really nice drive by Detroit and it really now comes down to can they finish it the football? Now it's now they just have to finish. Here's Montgomery Third downs tonight a different story than the previous two weeks for their last seven And one for five Montgomery has got it touchdown Frank Ragnow with a good block and a three-yard touchdown for Montgomery. The linebacker, the only guy who really has a chance to try to make a play, he's trying to fill the hole for the touchdown. Second lead of the night for the Lions. Again, it's th go 13 plays, 74 yards. The Cowboys have trailed at the Cowboys did in the fourth quarter, but came back to win. Deuce Vaughn. A little banged up at the end of that one. Well, this game, as we talked about, Joe, shoot out for this Detroit offense. Here's Vaughn on a screen. He's going to be just short of first down yardage as Jalen Reeves Mabin, who has completed a pass tonight for a first down on a fake punt, makes the tackle a gain of 10. Well, Deuce Vaughn, he's getting his opportunity because of Rico Dowdle, who's not in the lineup tonight. But, boy, they come up. That's a pretty good hit there by Branch at the end of this play. That kept Deuce Vaughn from picking up that first down. I'm sure Deuce gets tired of hearing about his height. 5'5", five, five, 180. He's out. Pollard back in, and he's got it, and then some. Couple of good moves and a big run for the Cowboys into Lions territory. And with a little Arlington assist at the end of it, an 18-yard carry by Tony Pollard. Yeah, that was close to going to the house, too. Big Jack Campbell, he comes flying up in there. Hunter Lipke, he's the fullback. And Campbell comes up. He, he takes a piece of him. But, boy, that's good, tough running by Tony Pollard. He hasn't seen many holes in this game tonight. They stay with it, and Pollard is brought down by Barnes in the backfield. A loss of one. Well, Barnes reads it well because he's trying to stay home as to whether or not Dak Prescott is going to keep this ball, and he's waiting to make sure that Pollard has it. He collapses and makes a nice play. Lions have seven tackles for loss in this game. Play action from Prescott. Going to heave. Looking for Cooks. Not there. No, and it, it never was there. They actually, he's trying to take the deep shot to, to Cooks. But Kirby Joseph, he was playing center field. There was never much of an opportunity for that to be completed. And Tyler Smith is down. They're outstanding. Wow. Second year guard. Grabbing at the back of his left 
leg. So they'll check on him a minute 52 remaining third quarter. Here's that try for Cooks wasn't there third and 11 when we come back. Ooh, stuffed up again. So congested. You need Sinex. Power. It's third down and 11. Any update we get on Smith will pass it on. Aaron Glenn has been aggressive on third down with the blitz, and it looks like he's bringing it here on third and long. They do. Pass is caught. Lamb. First down. And what a job by Prescott to hang in there, take the hit, and deliver a strike for a first down. It really is because CeeDee Lamb comes off the ball and he doesn't run the route so much as though he's expecting the ball to come out quick with the pressure that Detroit brings. You see, he shakes at the top of the route a little bit, but Prescott, he hangs in there as long as he could and gets it on him. That's a great pickup. You know, that's the difference in punting and now in a position where you're going to come away with points on this drive. That was Jack Campbell on the blitz. Strong play by Prescott. Here's Cooks. With that catch, by the way, C.D. Lamb is now one yard short of tying the franchise record for receiving yards in a season. So he'll, at the end of the night, most likely have the most catches and the most receiving yards in a season in Cowboys franchise history. Heck, the history of that jersey number alone is as good as it gets in the NFL. Second and eight. Good protection and a drop by Lamb. Throw a little on his back hip and it's third and eight. Yeah, just a little bit behind him and a pretty good move. They call that a jerk, a, a jerk move. You're going to see as he comes across that it looks initially like he's going to set up right there. Linebacker drives on it and then he takes off. Just, just not, you know, that's one that CeeDee Lamb catches, but you know, obviously Prescott would like to put that out in front of him a little bit more. Third down and eight. Lamb can't make the catch. It's fourth down. Lamb spins around looking for a flag, won't get it. And with 27 seconds left in the third quarter, it's fourth down. And Brandon Aubrey will come on and try and tie it. Well, you know, that's, uh, yeah, they, and Brandon Aubrey, speaking of him, I mean, this guy just doesn't miss. But here's a look at it, and you got Melifonwu, number six, who was right there, and I think C.D. Lamb kind of felt that as well. 51-yard attempt. Aubrey is sensational. He is 34 for 34 in his first year in the NFL. Former college soccer star at Notre Dame, played two years in the USFL, not considered a rookie by NFL guidelines, but phenomenal nonetheless. We're tied back in 15 seconds after a word from T-Mobile. Whoa, the new iPhone 15 with that amazing camera. I mean, I just wonder what exactly his range was. And I asked him if you had to make three points to win a game, just what exactly is your range? And I said, is 70 yards out of the question? He said, no. So when you've got that, when you've got that kind of leg and he has it and the confidence that he's playing with, boy, talk about Mike McCarthy feeling good about that part of his, his unit going into the postseason. That's a weapon. And there just are no kick returns against Dallas. He's already set a record with over 90 touchbacks. His timeline played high school soccer in Plano, Texas. A defender for Notre Dame soccer, USFL. He's not, by NFL standards, considered a rookie, even though this is his first year in the National Football League. According to the Elias Sports Bureau, here's Gibbs, able to break loose. And Jameer Gibbs with a flag down back near the line of scrimmage. 
is going to have this call back. Holy offense, 482. Ten yard penalty. Still first down. Against the tight end James Mitchell to erase a 34 yard run. Well, here's a look at it because, man, there was a, a nice hole there. Yeah, he's got a hold of that shoulder pad. You see it with the right hand. Yeah, that's that was because they got Odigi oh, Zuwa was running up the field. He thought that Jared Goff had kept the football and they had a double team then on Mozzie Smith. Totally collapsed him. That, that was a big hole. It's going to be a, a nice gain even without the hold. It's the end of the third in a 10-10 game. Two teams trying to get a big win. Here in Johnson going into the ring of honor, we've seen two teams that are headed for the postseason. Locking horns tonight, first down and 15 for the Lions as they hand to Gibbs. Broke one tackle. Odigi Zuwa couldn't bring down Gibbs. Stephon Gilmore could, and it's a gain of just two. Well, I think if you're Dan Campbell and you come into this game, if if you told him you could go into the fourth quarter in a 10-10 ball game, I, I think he'd take that all day long. And so the game, as I said, is played out the way I think you would want it to if you're the Detroit Lions. The, the, I just think they're going to have to get a little more out of their passing game than what they've had up to this point if they're going to be able to finish this one off. Second down, good protection. Downfield, Williams got it. Jamison Williams to the 15. Parsons had pressure. Goff hung in. 63 yards to Jamison Williams. Well, one thing that we know that Jamison Williams can do is fly. And he is putting it on display on this play because you got Deron Bland who's trying to keep up with him. And it's a matter of whether or not Jared Goff can get the ball out there far enough. And he has to do it with Micah Parsons barreling down on him right in his face. And he hangs in there and delivers a strike. What a play by Goff. Here's Gibbs left side. And well played by the Dallas defense. That's the longest catch in the very young career for Jamison Williams. When we talked to Jared Goff about him, and now Jordan Lewis is slow to get up. A big piece of this defense. Their nickel corner, and he needs attention. Jared Goff told us with regard to Williams, he's just settling in. He missed his first 11 games last year, rehabbing a torn ACL that he suffered in college. Here's the end of that play with Lewis coming in low, and he gets hit up in the back of the left shoulder by his teammate Marquise Bell. And then Williams was suspended the first four games of this season, violating the NFL guidelines on gambling. And so here he is now starting to figure it out. A year removed from ACL surgery, and he's showing all he can do. Yeah, he really is, and it, it's nice to see for Detroit because he is the big play threat. And they've got, so I like their group, I, I like their skill players, but a lot of them are better in, in shorter spaces. And they've, they've got great quickness, they work the underneath stuff, they work the intermediate routes, but you always need somebody that can take the top off the defense, especially. In a game like this, when you've been running the football and now the defense is starting to crowd you a little bit, and then you're able to put Jamison Williams out there and have him run right by Deron Bland, that was that was a pretty play. I'd like to say it's the best ball I've ever seen golf throw, but I wouldn't say that because I've seen him throw some awfully good ones over the years. Second down and 12. Here's St. Brown. Hit in stride after making his break. And that was a thing of beauty from Goff and a completion of 10 yards, third and short coming up. Yeah, we haven't seen much uh, action for Amon Ross St. Brown since the first half, but he's a guy when they, the Cowboys, they like to play man coverage, and especially when they get down here. They're over 80% man. They play more man in the red zone than any other defense. So Ben Johnson's going to dial up his best man beater right here.
Third down and three. Protection. Gibbs incomplete. Fourth down. And you would think on the road in a tie game. Campbell will take the points, but he's already tried it once, and right now on fourth and three, he's leaving his offense out there again. He's going to stick to his guns. I, 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 that's a hard throw down here, and I don't blame Goff on the miss. It was a little bit wide, but it, man, it, it is hard to get yourself to put it on a receiver when you're throwing an out route when the defender doesn't have to defend any more field than what he has behind him. Analytics says go for it. Dan Campbell, most importantly, says go for it. And the delay of game will send us to a Michael Badgley field goal try. Yeah, that was, I, I think he's just trying to draw him off, see if maybe he can pick up some yards. I, I don't think that he had any intention. I don't think that was on golf not seeing the play clock. I think that was just what they wanted to do. You can see Dan saying good drive. It was 63 yarder to Jamison Williams the biggest play and now a 30 yard try for Michael Badgley his third game active as kicker for the Lions for the lead. Lions back on top. Take a break, come back. 12-18 left in this good one in Arlington. Oh. Jamison Williams went into the tent, had that 63-yard completion that set up the eventual field goal by Badgley, and now he is walking off. Time now for our total replay brought to you by State Farm and the biggest play of the game for Dallas, the 92-yarder in the first half. First, a third down and four, and then this play on what could have been a safety. And here's the 92-yarder to C.D. Lamb. Yeah, that's really all they got to show for what they've done tonight after the fumble that C.D. had. They went in the back of the end zone, and here is a wide open C.D. Lamb. He lowers his shoulder and gets about 10. That is the catch that puts him over the top now the most catches and receiving yards in a single season in Dallas Cowboys franchise history. Well you see the record that Michael had and the one that CeeDee Lamb just broke now the one when Michael had his year the Cowboys went on to win the Super Bowl so that's what every Cowboys fan and these Dallas Cowboys are hoping happens this season but Right now, you just wonder if they can get the running game going enough to take a little pressure off this passing game tonight. Here is Lamb again. T.J. Bass, Lisa Zalter, still in. Do you have an update on Tyler Smith? Yeah, he's uh, out of the medical tent. They're calling it a foot injury. He had been testing it out over here on the sideline. Now he's just standing. Uh, they're saying his return is questionable. Yeah, it's been frustrating up front for the offensive line just 52% of the time that they had their preferred offensive line healthy and playing this season. Second down and five. Handoff is to Pollard, and the offensive line does nothing there. Good play by Campbell and Pascal. No gain. Well, Pollard, his night, he's got 34 yards on the night, and one run was for 18 yards. So he's got essentially, after you take the 18-yard run out, he's got 11 carries for 16 yards. And I mean, this defense, we knew they were tough coming in, but this this Cowboys team, I mean, they pride themselves on, on being able to be balanced, but they just have not gotten anything going on the ground in this one. Brings up third and five. Blitz coming. They pick up Anzalone. Here's Cooks. What a catch! Brandon Cooks with a big first down for Dallas. Perfect uh, throw by Prescott. Yeah, such a great throw. Everything was good by everybody. Brian Branch was in the slot covering, and he's in great position to make a play. He navigates a lot of traffic in order to run with Cooks. And yet, Prescott just drops it in perfectly. 
Mark that one. Here's a broken play, and Prescott turns it into a nice game. Gets a hit from Anzalone at the end, but gets five. Well, that's one of the best runs they've had tonight on a broken play. But here's the route. You see Brian Branch. He's got to navigate all these bodies in order to get with Cooks, and he's right there. But that ball was just thrown perfectly by Prescott. They knew they were going to get man coverage. He knew where he was going with the football. Everything went the way that they had hoped. And really for Detroit as well, it's just perfect execution. Cowboys hurried up after that 21-yard completion to make sure there wasn't time to review it, but that was a catch. And a brilliant one at that. Here's Hutchinson, doesn't get there, and the pass is caught by Tolbert. His first catch of the night, Jalen good for nine. And a first down. Jalen Tolbert, he does a lot of the dirty work in the, in the run game. A lot of what Noah Brown used to do and some of the play action and the, when they run the ball off of some of their, their other sets. And last week, however, you, know, you can't go to sleep on him. He had a big catch last week against Miami on a deep ball. 45-yard reception or so. Pollard, one of his better runs of the night. Picked up 10. Pollard, he just figures if, if there's not going to be much there, he's just going to start carrying bodies with him. And, you know, contact at the line of scrimmage, and he just keeps his legs going. And his second best run of the night. They stick with it. A little bit of traction and still driving those legs down inside the 10. The Cowboys have scored 10 points and 20 points their last two games. They've been held to 10 points tonight, but knocking on the door here at home where points have seemingly been easy to come by. Well, Tony Pollard, you know, you think when he was the second back to Ezekiel Elliott, you think of him as this scat back and, you know, that he's more of a finesse runner. But, you know, we've seen on those last two runs, he's a, he's a powerful guy and he can run between the tackles. Second and four, end zone, Cooks, touchdown, Cowboys. Boy, Prescott made some great throws on that drive. Yeah, it's subtle, but as he comes off the ball, he goes straight up the field, and he's got a two-way break, or the defender thinks that he does. And so you can't really commit one way or another. He goes to the corner, and he creates a separation. And now a four-point lead. What a year he's had. Traded from the Texans. And Dak Prescott thrilled to have him. He's back on top. Glad you're with us on a Saturday night. Well worth the engagement here in Arlington. 17-13 game. Lions about to possess the ball for just the third time in this second half. They've scored the first two times they've had it here in the second. Take a look at our money moment brought to you by SoFi. Brandon Cooks, Dak Prescott. Dak was five for five on the touchdown drive and two beauties to Cooks. Yeah, he made some perfect throws on this drive, there's no doubt. And Brandon Cooks shows what he's able to do when given the opportunity. Great route there on that touchdown. Hasn't been as involved this year is really what I what I anticipated that he might be. Of course, C.D. Lamb, he's been a big part of what they've been able to do in the passing game and the big plays that they've had. And then Jake, if, if he is, in fact, the third guy, he's definitely the number two wide receiver, but he's an awfully good one to have. Play action from Goff. He's got his tight end, Mitchell. And Mitchell knocked down by Jordan Lewis. Let's go down to Lisa. Yeah, Joe, Lions receiver Jamison Williams. He's 
not in the game. He had been in the medical tent and went back to the locker room for them to look at an ankle injury. He came back out onto the field and then went right back into the medical tent. They're saying he's questionable to return. Yeah, big piece of the puzzle, Lisa, for them to not have. Under seven to go, fourth quarter, second and six. There's Montgomery. Parsons with the tackle. Gain of one. Well, you look at the way this game has gone, Joe. There hasn't been a, a lot of quick possessions. And right now at third down, you know, how is, of course, six minutes to play? If they don't do anything here, he'll punt. But you start asking yourself the question, just how many possessions might Detroit have? This would be a big one to convert, no doubt. Third down and five. Goff, incomplete for Amon Ross St. Brown, no flags. With heavy pressure from Demarcus Lawrence. And the punt team comes on for the Lions. Well, that's a tough one on Jared Goff. Demarcus Lawrence is right here. Jonah Jackson, number 73. And he's just not able to square up and get out in front of him. And the ball gets hit with Lawrence coming in on Goff and not able to deliver an accurate ball. So a great job. One by Dallas taking the ball down the field, coming away with the touchdown, and then the defense answering and forcing a punt. Turpin waits for the punt from Jack Fox. They faked it one time tonight, not here. Line drive punt and a fair catch by Turpin. Called in at the 27. 43 yard punt. Back to work. Dak in the offense for the Cowboys. Runs into the teeth of this much improved from a year ago Lions run defense. Don't miss the NFL playoffs on ESPN and ABC. We'll cap off Super Wild Card Weekend with the annual Monday night game on January 15th. Then our divisional round game will be on Saturday the 20th or Sunday the 21st. Both games are on ESPN, ABC, and ESPN+. Plus. Cowboys trying to win out and hope for an Eagles loss to win the division. Play action from Prescott. Gallup had stopped. The throw was downfield and they throw a flag. Yeah, I'll be interested to hear what John has to say because it, it was an uncatchable ball and there was contact. Illegal contact. Defense, number 29. Five yard penalty, automatic first down. What it is. It is a legal contact because he carries the contact more than five yards with the quarterback in the pocket prior to the pass. So you see the illegal contact and then you see what the Lions were arguing that this throw was downfield when Gallup had pulled up. Yeah. That could have been pass inter or uh, intentional grounding from what I've seen this year. <laughs> <laughs> Do you really want to go that no, I don't. But Kendall Vildor, I mean, clearly there was a miscommunication with Ian Dak Prescott. Here is Pollard, not much, and Vildor, you just said, came in to make that stop. Yeah, and Vildor, who's getting his start tonight because of the problems that they've had on that at that corner position opposite, opposite of Cam Sutton. Jerry Jacobs started 12 games, and then he gave up a fourth and 13 yard touchdown against Chicago and his days were pretty much done and then Khalil Dorsey started the last two weeks he didn't play so well and now Kendall Vildor but he had his hands full on that last play when he got called with the penalty second and ten Prescott trying to drop it to Pollard Incomplete with Anzalone there defending. Stops the clock with 4.19 to go. It's third down and 10. Yeah, that's a great job by this secondary because all the time that Prescott had in the pocket to try to find somebody, they're locked up. 
in man coverage. They're playing inside out on CeeDee Lamb, but he even is able to get to the outside with an opportunity. But there's there's CD in, in, in the slot 88 and a little contact at the top of that route. But a big third down right now. Lions need a stop. Under four and a half to go. Third down and ten, and there he is again. What a night, C.D. Lamb. It's going to be a 200-yard night. And not to be stopped. Gets 22 here. Well, I'm not sure what's happening. Couldn't tell exactly who was in coverage. Oh, yeah, it was Cam Sutton, and, and he wasn't ready for the snap or trying to communicate or something, but they were bringing the pressure, which they've done. And see, Lamb just, you, know, you don't want to give up the inside when you're playing man across the board the way that they were, but they've gone to C.D. Lamb in those situations, and he's won. Does a great job off the ball, but not very good play there by Cam Sutton. And the fifth 200-yard game in the NFL this season, 216. A career high, and why not put it in his hands again? Anzalone, but on that carry again of five. On them about the changes that were made going into that Chargers game when C.D. Lamb had talked about he wanted more opportunity. They didn't feel that they were being game planned to open him up, and he talked about how he was trying to protect the offensive line because of some of the changes that were happening up there, but. There was no doubt there was a concerted effort to get C.D. Lamb the ball. This is incomplete for Jake Ferguson. And there has been really ever since that Chargers game. And, you know, we've seen the results. They've moved him around. They've made it difficult on a defense as to where he's going to line up. They motion him. They do a lot of different things. And he has, he has really delivered. In case you're wondering, it would be a 60-yard field goal from this spot. That's within the range of Aubrey if you don't get it then you think about that or you think about going for it there's a lot on the line here on this third down and five play extra men on the rush and it's Hutchinson spinning his way to Prescott oh man that takes all the decision out of it and Aiden Hutchinson the move that he makes off the line of scrimmage. Karen still, you can see this spin move that he has off that right side. The spin right there and a direct shot then on Prescott. They needed a play. They, as you mentioned, they were well within the range for a field goal attempt. Boy, he's had a heck of a night. I'll say. And then he does the stanky leg for you <laughs> on Jimmy Johnson's night. Third this sack of the night for Hutchinson. That's what you were doing the other night? That's what they call that? I never knew. Makes me think of uh, Travis Kelsey in the Super Bowl. That's the fifth <laughs> tackle for a loss for Hutchinson. Third sack. The guy is just sensational. And this game hangs in the balance, and the punt team comes on for the Cowboys. And welcome back inside the booth. We'll see if the Lions can get this ball down the field and get it into what Mike McCarthy might have done if, if that was just an incomplete pass. Because as we mentioned, Brandon Aubrey, I mean, he's been automatic. Four-point game. Fair catch. And Khalif Raymond saying he was touched by Sam Williams on Sam's way past him. But no flag. Playoff picture. Here's another look at it. Trying to go through it again. You got the 49ers in the catbird seat at 11 and 4. Right now, the Eagles lead the East. But if the Cowboys win out and the Eagles lose either at home to Arizona or at the Giants, the Cowboys would win the division. They still have an outside shot, albeit unlikely at the number one seat. And then you've got Detroit. They can be no worse than a number three seed. They win their final two. They're the number two seed, and they have an outside shot at the number one seed. Goff over the middle. Pass is caught by Laporta. And Laporta, who had a wrap around his right ankle earlier in the game, gets 15 yards. Yeah, that shows his toughness. Weren't, wasn't real sure whether or not we'd see much more of him. But Goff, he's got one-on-one. -on -one. He goes right to him. It's a nice completion. Two timeouts left for the Lions. Whoa. And an interception. Pick 
picked off by Wilson. We'll see the end of it and make sure Donovan Wilson secured this going to the ground. What a play. Yeah, really great play. He does secure it. The ball is behind him. But again, it goes back to the pass rush of the Cowboys that Donovan Wilson, Deron Bland, they anticipate the ball coming out quickly. And so they sit on these routes. And when you're throwing these outside breaking routes, this is why you've got to get it to the outside. When you've got a, a guy who's sitting on it like Wilson is, you take a look at it. He's sitting on the route, anticipating the outside breaking ball, and makes a heck of a play. What a play by Donovan Wilson. Gets the pick. Here's a flag on this play as we get to the two-minute warning here in Arlington. Nickel corner Jordan Lewis, the other pick, and Goff.